Let's move on to our next conversation. Trascarcity in some states in Nigeria continues to linger, posing a major challenge for transporters and commuters. Following recent kills in states like Niger, Nasarawa, Kaduna, and Abuja, the federal government has threatened to revoke the license of any film marketer or retailer found hoarding petrol. The federal government also frowned against the legal sale of petrol in containers, stating that such acts pose huge safety and health concerns for Nigeria. Siki, this is not the first time we're hearing such, but people continue to do whatever they like. This is not the first time. Um, part of the reason why I, I, moved, I came in late is because of the huge way traffic okay. on the road now. If you're coming in from the Todd Melan Bridge, heading towards there, from the Ugudu, Aziz, to Alakbere, to the toll gate, is completely blocked because West Coast City seems to have um, resurfaced in Lagos. You long just come yes, long queues. Sorry. Yes, uh, long queues of, and this has been happening even in Abuja longer than this. To the extent that if you get to the uh, central area, Abuja, uh, opposite the NMPC headquarters, there's a there's a fuel station there. There have been consistent um, long queue of um, for fuel directly opposite NMPC headquarters in Abuja. Mm -hmm. And the question you ask yourself, what is NMPC doing about it? So when I hear uh, the issue of um, uh, people hoarding petrol and the rest of them, yeah, I continue to wonder, hoarding comes when there is shortfall. It's always like that. Hoarding always comes when there is shortfall. When you have enough, Someone will hurt. Nobody will go to hurt anything. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And I have said it, and there was, uh, it was here I said it. And I gave a classical good example of what happened when I, was in, uh, when I was in the music industry. Part of the problem we had when I was the A&R manager, artist and promotions manager of Sony Music, the biggest music company in Nigeria in the 90s, is that we came to realize that consistently we are having a lot of copyright issues. People reproducing our works. By the time we release Lagbaja, one of our artists, by the time we release it, you just realize that we just release a certain number. But by the time you go to Mary, that Roland stretch, you go to Alaba, get it. The music is all over the place. And the artist is, oh, this music is everywhere. That can, you can rest assured that 90% of those works okay. are parated. Mm -hmm. And we now did our research. And research showed that. It's because of what we are not flooding the market with enough and having enough retail assets. And that is what is happening. Now the question to ask. First of all, we, I, we talk about people that were issued the licenses. There were some people that were issued with licenses for refineries, modul, uh, uh, modular refineries, and the rest of them. And out of there are so many that were given, the question you ask yourself, how many of them have been able to prove that to you? That is one. The second part will remain. If they are not putting it to school, what are the reasons? Okay. Because I, can't just, I cannot just collect a license, I just keep not it in my portfolio. Then definitely, definitely that something fundamental. Have we addressed those issues that make them to, not to be able to build those refineries as they are? Now, we are having fresh scarcity. We have raised, we have removed subsidies from petroleum. The excuses we are giving before was that our petroleum products were so underpriced that we were having them being shipped to other parts of the country, uh, other okay. country of the world. In fact, the custom CG at the point came to debunk the erroneous belief and the statistics that we are giving that, uh, is it about 64? Uh, how many millions were they saying we were consuming then? If you remember vividly, they said that we are consuming on a, on a monthly basis, which the CG of course, some came to say, no, it's not possible. Mm. Mm. If you remember, point, they, even, they, uh, they even claimed that we were uh, consuming 101 million liters. That is what I'm saying. And they said we were consuming. Then I think it took the effort of the CG to say, no, it's not possible now. Mm. That so it's, if, not, it's not even uh, It's not even tenable. It's not tenable. There is no way. He said, where are the roads through which the trucks were tell us we pass through to move with those these things? So there's something fundamental. The major importer of petrol products in Nigeria today is the NMPCL. So they have to tell us why we are having this. That is one. Two, um, three, is the issue of the refineries that have been promising. I remember vividly, the last time we were, one of the last time we were here, and I was, we were I was big on this, 
And when we, the minister and the MD, GMD of NMP tell, told us that, that uh, the refinery will start working in June, we said it closed here. You remember that say August. We, said, we, said, we said it here that I said, I, there was a Yubab business, I said, Lori, you know. Uh, somebody asked me how. I said, I said, because we have shifted the post so many times until today, nobody is telling us. And we've been told now, it's, I don't know this when. Is this is the sixth time. time. I don't think we have a new date. The new sixth time. And nobody is telling us when that yeah, refinery. We are talking of just Portaco. We've not talked of Wario. Mm -hmm. We've not talked of Kaduna. There are two refineries in Portaco. Mm -hmm. And with the promise that's been made since December. And so people are sitting there in the offices and telling us that they're very patriotic. That they are very, very patriotic. They're giving everything. If you are not able to do the job you are appointed, why don't you just make do away with these people and get some other people who can do the job? Mm. What does it take to be the GMD of NMPC here and make sure that a country that produces crude oil in large quantum cannot have petroleum products, does not have a single refinery? Even the one that we've, somebody has decided to, um, uh, to build, we cannot even supply enough crude for him to be able to serve it. Oh. There is a big fundamental problem. Thank you. Uh, Sikia says there are fundamental problems, but this petrol scarcity every three months. I mean, despite that, there have been several policy regulations in the last one year, which I just expect should you know, give us some respite. But we're here today, still queuing, still uh, looking out for fuel. This one, I think this one was caused largely by the protest. Usually, when um, supply is disrupted, it takes a while before mm -hmm. things can normalize. Things will normalize. So, and they've explained. Then you see long queues. I don't believe that there is fuel scarcity at this time. Mm -hmm. But the prices vary. There are places where you just drive in, you buy fuel. At Ojojo yesterday, I drove in. There were no more than four of us. I bought fuel. Because my wife's car um, was taken to the mechanic and they brought it back empty. It's like the person who even drove it didn't even look at the fuel gauge. Mm -hmm. They brought it back empty. She would go to church. And she said she could not find the... Uh, and then she said, okay, let me... I know where we can see fuel without queue. It's about pricing largely. Where you see that the queue is very long. The price is way lower. There are uh, places where you buy petrol, maybe about 620 per liter. Some will sell as high as 800. As high as 800. So you go to NMPC, for example, or uh, um, Bovas. Bovas is a big, um, a big depot owner as well as a retailer. So she. Our prices are usually lower than those of other people. So you go elsewhere, they tell you to bring 750 per liter. So, you know, it's a deregulated environment. So where we are no longer um, having uniformity in terms of pricing. So, but people want to save money. They will queue, no matter how long the queue is. And that's what I see in Abuja too. They will queue to be very long. That, that difference means a lot to them. They don't want to go to where they will be told to come and pay uh, for a liter at 800. And then our neighbors, the extent of smuggling is probably higher now than before. Mm. There is no week that you don't see... Um, uh, custom season hundreds of jerry cans of, of petrol that they are trying to ship across to Cameroon to uh, uh, our neighbors Chad and the uh, Niger Republic. Because despite the fact that in Lagos, for example, you can buy petrol at less than 600, in those border communities, they are prepared to buy at 1,200 mm -hmm. naira per liter. So some of these unscrupulous marketers are already diverting some product to, to the borders. Customs, they've complained about this, that, look, we have to monitor um, trucks as they come out of the loading bay. 
we have to monitor, they have to put trackers on them because some of them are ending up at the border because it's cheaper. That's why mm -hmm. the price has gone up in Nigeria. It's still way cheaper than the amount is sold um, okay. uh, <clears throat> in, in those countries around us. It's just like Iran. Iran, their fuel is, uh, is cheaper than those of their neighbors. And they spend a lot of money trying to combat the fuel smuggling. Mm -hmm. So we find ourselves in that kind of situation. Fuel smuggling is on the rise now, no doubt about it. And I want to believe that some of them, especially outside uh, in, in Lagos and some of the border communities, a lot of diversion is going on. That is what we should really deal with. I don't know uh, about threats. If you, if you have evidence that somebody is diverting products, to the borders, or hoarding product, refusing mm. to sell when he has product. Because some of these people, I've seen the governor of Bono State go to a filling station, and he said he wanted to see their tank. Mm. Yes, and they gave him a peg, and he dipped it into the tank, and he discovered that they had, they had uh, petrol in anger. Mm. He called uh, the Okada riders in the area, he said, Koya, come and take fuel for free. Maybe you said you don't have fuel. <laughs> That's what Zulum did. So these people, a lot of them are hoarding. If it's just unfortunate that the regulator doesn't even have mm. enough people to properly monitor these guys. Otherwise, they will discover that a lot of the, the people who are claiming that they don't have fuel, they actually have. They are waiting for things to degenerate so that they can make more money. Because the 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 uh, the the uh, more scarce the thing becomes, the more money they are, they are going to make. It's, it's a, a, a terrible sector in terms of transparency. It's almost nil. And the people who are running the sector, they need to do a lot better. Nigeria shouldn't have a product that has become like a cost to it one of the seven biggest uh, crude oil producers in the world yes. without a functional refinery. That is, that okay, is are you, how exhausted, yeah, let me just, how exhausted are you that we have had to postpone the resurrection, quote and unquote, This one I've not even <laughs> heard from them that they postponed. Yeah. I just saw a story, a punch story, and it wasn't attributed to anybody, you know? At my level now as a journalist, mm. I cannot just jump on something. They didn't attribute that to anybody. I'm not saying the story is not true. I'm not saying it's not a product of investigation. But till now, they've not come out to officially say, okay, we told you August, but uh, the way it's going now. You said you first, week, us, first eh? week in August. This is August 18th. This mm. is Sunday, August You know, I don't know. No, VK, to I don't know what's to that, going too, to that too. Hmm? If... They also read that story and it's not true. Mm. You expect comment. them to have also come out to so make a statement that deal? yes, to say that what that the means they, they are struggling. That means they are struggling. The, the, if you understand, this is communication. We, <laughs> our job now. This is our job. If for whatever maybe reason, they are even the ones who who planted the story, story just to it's, give it's, us a, it's, give it's us a, a soft landing and they just, they just to, it's just to, to, to prepare to, the minds of, of Nigerians. I look. So we don't know. I want, you know, I've challenged uh, Mele Kiari many times. He's entitled to even see me as an enemy now. <laughs> because if you keep letting your country down, there's no way I can, uh, I can be happy with you. Give us a definitive time. You are an expert. You have experience in this sector. Give us a definitive time when... We can say the worry, I mean, the Portaco refinery will kick off. All right. And then the most modern refinery that we have, the worry refinery, when is it going to kick off? Let's, you, sh we should be able to, you should be able to tell us, and then we'll go to bed, convinced that you will meet that self-chosen self, uh, deadline. Because none of us forced him to Give say, okay, this is the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, on your own, you will come. There was a time the minister came here. After the minister spoke, we saw that the, uh, uh, the GMD too put um, validation to what the minister said. 
But since that time, the, the, the refinery has not officially... <laughs> it's, it's, no, this we are talking as we round up. We are even talking about this. There was a statement, a statement credited to him mm. during the Buhari's government. When he said that, when he that said there will be no importation. importation. When he said that all the refineries are going to work, there will be no importation. Yeah, there will be no importation. That if was during the Buhari's... If you Google it, if you Google, you see it. That Nigeria will be a net Next. exporter of refined uh, petroleum right. God bless you. We're still here. So what?